Hey, what's going on everybody? Jason here, and welcome back to another Modern Warfare 3 Zombies video. Today we're going to be covering the additional gameplay footage and information that we got about Modern Warfare 3 Zombies today at COD Next. And this is additional information that we got today besides the gameplay trailer that we got earlier today. So if you want to check that out and you want to see my reaction to the gameplay trailer, it will be linked down below in the description. We also got some clarification today on how some of the gameplay mechanics will work for Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. Kevin Drew and Miles Leslie, two of the Treyarch developers working on on this game, joined the COD Next livestream to share some more details about zombies. For the most part, everything they said was stuff we already knew about. There are six-man squads, the game only lasts an hour, this is open-world zombies, and there are elements of DMZ in this game mode. But they also shared some new information with us. For starters, they clarified what the acquisition system is actually going to entail. Essentially, the acquisition system is going to be something ripped straight from DMZ into Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. Similar to how you could start the game in DMZ with a UAV, or a self-revive, you can start the game in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies with Juggernaug and Pack-a-Punch. According to them, these mechanics are in place to make the player feel more powerful right off the bat if they want to jump right into the action with perks, Pack-a-Punch, and other things like that. So now we have a better understanding of how this acquisition system is going to work. It seems as if this all but eliminates the progression of zombies when you start the game. The charm of zombies, in my opinion, is that you start the game with nothing, and then as the game goes on, you get more and more powerful until you have all these fantastical wonder weapons, perks, and abilities. So having a system like this for zombies is questionable, but I guess we'll see how it actually plays out in practice. But moving on, we got some new gameplay of a brand new wonder weapon, the Scorcher. The Scorcher reminds me of the DIE shockwave from Black Ops Cold War Zombies. You shoot out a giant energy blast that kills a bunch of zombies. However, this wonder weapon is somewhat unique. The secondary ability of this wonder weapon allows you to launch yourself into the air. Because the Warzone map is so large, launching yourself in the air, pulling your parachute, and gliding to another location will make traversing the map a little bit easier. And I have to give credit where credit is due. That's a pretty cool idea for a wonder weapon, especially if this is going to be the largest zombies map of all time. We got some gameplay of the wonder weapon, and it looks pretty cool. Moving on to some more gameplay footage, we see the Aether Storm in action. The Aether Storm is going to function similarly to how the gas worked in DMZ. The Aether Storm will slowly start to collapse on the player when the game is ending. And if this mechanic is going to be a one-to-one -one recreation of what happened in DMZ, I can only imagine we also have to get to the Exfil Chopper to get out of the area, in addition to having zombies and other human combatants trying to kill us. In the footage of the Aether Storm, we also see the Pack-a-Punch camos and Pack-a-Punch weapons in action. The Pack-a-Punch camos look okay. They're nothing super crazy like the Origins Pack-a-Punch camo or the Mob of the Dead Pack-a-Punch camo. Pretty standard, if I'm being honest. That doesn't mean the Pack-a-Punch camo is necessarily bad, however. And we also see the new Disciple in combat. Another video we received from Call of Duty shows us some sweeping shots of the classic perk machines and classic zombies mechanics. We see Speed Cola, Quick Revive, Stamina Up, the Mystery Box, the Pack-a-Punch Machine, but then we also see an Ethereum Corrupted Buy Station. And this is where more of the DMZ mechanics start to appear. I can only imagine these buy stations are going to be a hybrid buy station between what we saw in DMZ and then also giving us score streaks like in Black Ops Cold War with the salvage and the buildable tables. Where instead of salvage like in Black Ops Cold War, you just spend points at the buy station in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies to get death machines and airstrikes and the new juggernaut suit that we saw in the trailer. We also see a couple shots of wall weapons which confirm that the weapon rarity system is back. We see a green uncommon rarity weapon and we also see a blue rare rarity weapon. Another thing clarified on the COD Next livestream were the difficulty levels on the map. What this means is that when you infiltrate the map for the first time, you start on the outskirts of the map. As you get closer and closer to the center of the map, the enemies will get harder and harder. This is also illustrated to us in an image that Call of Duty posted about all of the different difficulty levels. We see the outskirts, which I'm going to call level 1 difficulty, we see the yellow area, which I'm going to call level 2 difficulty, and then the red area in the middle of the map that I'm just going to call level 3 difficulty. In this level 3 difficulty zone, there's going to be a ton of zombies, human combatants, and special enemy types. So enemies like the Disciple, the Mimic, and the Mangler will appear in this area more frequently. And speaking of enemy types, the Abomination returns in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, but with a bit of a twist. This time, the Abomination is much bigger than we saw it back in Black Ops Cold War Zombies, and now it's called the Mega Abomination. So I can only imagine that it's going to be more difficult to take down. And I can also imagine that this enemy spawns in in the red, super hard difficulty zone on the map. And lastly, when it comes to the narrative of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, Kevin Drew also confirmed that this is going to be taking place between Modern Warfare 2019 and Modern Warfare 2 2022. And unfortunately, 
there will be no Easter eggs at launch. However, according to Charlie Intel, there will be a main story quest at launch, which is kind of weird wording. Easter egg and main story quest have been synonymous in the zombies community for a long time, so I'm not sure what is meant by this. Does this mean there will be no side objectives and side Easter eggs on the map at launch and there will just be the main quest story narrative like a campaign? Or will there quite literally be no story and no main quest to complete, but a bunch of side objectives like Outbreak was on launch? Are we going to be getting Duran Fong 2 with just a bunch of objectives to complete with no Easter egg? But then are these hypothetical side objectives going to be contributing to the overall narrative of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies where you help out Ravenov and Soap and Laswell? I'm not entirely sure. It's not super clear at the moment. But overall, this is all the information that we got today about Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. Some aspects of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies seem more entertaining than others. However, I'm still going to be skeptical of this game mode. I know I sound like a broken record, but because I got burned out of DMZ pretty quickly, I'm just concerned about DMZ style mechanics being implemented into a zombies mode. Narratively speaking, with Terminus Outcomes and Operation Deadbolt and what happened to the Requiem crew and what's going to be happening with the zombies moving forward, that could be kind of interesting. We haven't really seen a zombie story be told in the modern era, so that at least could be somewhat interesting. However, when it comes to the gameplay, I'm still not entirely sure. And I know exactly what they're trying to do. They're trying to appeal to so many different audiences at the same time. However, sometimes when you try to appeal to everybody, you end up appealing to nobody. This game mode wants to attract DMZ, Warzone, Zombies, and Outbreak fans all at the same time, but is it really going to turn out the way they want it to? This game mode wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't by itself. I think Zombies still needs to go back to its roots and at least have one round-based map on launch. I know we're not getting that from Modern Warfare 3 and round base is going to have to wait until 2024 and Treyarch's next game, but still, my opinion still stands. It just seems to me that Activision pulled Treyarch to work on this game similar to how they pulled Treyarch to work on Vanguard Zombies for Sledgehammer games. I really hope we don't have another Vanguard on our hands. A huge chunk of the Zombies community is just waiting and hoping that Treyarch's game in 2024 is going to be good. There are a lot of disaffected fans right now and Modern Warfare 3 Zombies is going to be really interesting to see how that plays out. But what do you think about Modern Warfare 3 Zombies? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. Anyways guys, that's it for this video and I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like and subscribe if you're a brand new viewer. And with that said, have a fantastic rest of your day or night depending on where you are in this crazy world and I'll see you guys next time.